Hello and welcome to the Aqua Hacking Challenge. Uh, our challenge for you is how can we improve the control and management of aquatic invasive species? So a little bit about our team. I'm Erin Franchel. I'm a St. Mary's uh, Master's of Science student. I'm really excited to be part of the challenge this year. Um, and my project is looking to evaluate the impacts of invasive fish species, in this case, chain pickerel, um, on lake food web structure, as well as the implications for species at risk. And I'm Kaylee McLeod. I am also a St. Mary's University student, um, as well as a project coordinator for Coastal Action. And my master's project is looking at mercury concentrations and the trophodynamics of freshwater food webs and how that relates to consumption guidelines for fish. It's a little description of aquatic invasive species. Um, they can be species of fish, invertebrate, plant, uh, and other species that have been introduced into a new aquatic environment outside of their natural range. Um, because they've been introduced into a new environment, uh, aquatic invasive species can grow very quickly. Um, and this is because they don't have natural predators in their new environment. Uh, as a result, they can outcompete or impact native populations. Um, so there's a wide variety of pathways for introduction of aquatic invasive species. Uh, these can be both intentional and unintentional in nature. So an intentional introduction could include the introduction of a fish species for recreational fishing purposes. Um, and an unintentional introduction could be, for example, um, if the hull of a boat wasn't cleaned properly during transportation, um, this could move an aquatic invasive species outside of their natural range. So what are the impacts of aquatic invasive species? These also vary greatly um, and can be very unpredictable. Um, so some of the more prominent impacts um, of aquatic invasive species introductions are a reduction in biodiversity and habitat quality. Um, again, because they lack natural predators in their new environment, they can outcompete and be a threat to native species. Um, and they can be very costly from both a management perspective and for aquatic industries, uh, for example, aquaculture or commercial and recreational fishing. Um, and they can be harmful for recreation activities such as fishing or if they decrease kind of the overall water quality uh, in their new aquatic ecosystem. So now that we've talked a little bit about aquatic invasive species, here is an example to show the impacts. Uh, I'll just quickly talk about chain pickerel in Nova Scotia. They were initial, initially introduced into three lakes in Nova Scotia for sport fishing purposes in 1945, um, but they've since expanded drastically. Uh, they can now be found in over 200 distinct water bodies in Nova Scotia as of 2022. Uh, and these subsequent introductions have been both natural via connectivity between water bodies uh, and also illegal uh, subsequent introductions for fishing purposes. Um, there are a wide variety of impacts of an introduced species, but some of the known and primary impacts of these chain pickerel introductions um, have been that they simplify the fish community in lakes. So there's significantly lower species richness and diversity in lakes that contain chain pickerel. They can reduce the overall fish abundance in a lake and they can truncate fish size distribution in a lake. So this was noted through an absence of small bodied fish populations in lakes that contain chain pickerel. So before Kayla talks about our existing control and management measures, I'll look at just the invasion curve. Um, the curve on this graph is the growth and spread of an invasive species. Uh, on the y-axis, you have increasing area affected by the species, uh, as well as cost to management. Um, and then along the x-axis is time. Um, so before an aquatic invasive species is either detected uh, or introduced, there is steps to manage, um, including prevention. Um, lastly, once a species is introduced, uh, you kind of have three primary steps. Um, there's the potential for eradication if there's a small amount of this introduced species. Um, there's containment once the species has become slightly more established if eradication isn't possible um, or is not plausible. Um, and then over time, if an aquatic invasive species is able to establish itself in a new environment, you're looking at long-term management costs. Um, so this can be incredibly costly. And you also have to think about the asset protection of species at risk uh, and your native species or industries. Um, so for just a quick example of costs associated with the management of an aquatic invasive species, um, according to the Great Lakes Fishery Commission, 
Canada and the United States budgeted around 40 million Canadian dollars uh, in the 2019-2020 fiscal year to control just one aquatic invasive species, which is sea lamprey. Um, that significantly impacts Great Lake fisheries. So some of the existing control and management practices that we have include manual removal. So these are things such as electrofishing, angling, and trapping. If a species is identified in an area early on, you can also isolate this area to prevent the spread. So this could be barriers that you place upstream and downstream or at inflows and outflows. There's also chemical removal methods, which are less often used, and we'll get into a case study here in a second. And all of these typically come with some sort of educational aspect. There are a lot of educational campaigns out there targeted towards the general public on how they can reduce the spread of invasive species. So looking at Piper Lake in Guysborough County, Nova Scotia, previously they had no invasive species in this watershed. However, in 2019, an angler caught a smallmouth bass in this lake. This was great concern for managers because there are populations of trout and salmon in this river, which are of high recreational value to anglers. So as I mentioned in 2019, the first bass was discovered. They then underwent intensive removal and prevention methods. So this included electrofishing, angling, and putting barriers at the inflow and outflow of the lake. The following spring, they found evidence that they had not eradicated all of the smallmouth bass. So they underwent a more intensive approach. And in the fall of 2020, applied the chemical rotenone to the lake. They continued to monitor this lake for both evidence that they had removed all of the bass, as well as for the return of native species as the ecosystem recovered. Some key takeaways, as we mentioned, aquatic invasive species can have unpredictable effects on food webs and aquatic systems. They impact everything from water quality, trophic structure, and even contaminant transfer. Controlling and managing these populations can help us to preserve native biodiversity and ecosystem function. We're facing a new challenge with climate change. As waters warm, there's increased potential for new invasions. So looking at management and control practices, we're hoping to prevent and prepare for these new invasions. So we're looking for your innovative solutions to manage and control populations of aquatic invasive species in Atlantic Canada. We're looking forward to seeing what you have for solutions for this. If you want more information on things that we've talked about, you can follow these links here. Thank you for listening and we're looking forward to your solutions.